you ever get your B's and D's mixed up? Sometimes? Well, let's see if we can't fix that. Iko confuses B's and D's. She's in the second grade, and it's gonna get in the way of her reading. So we have to fix that problem, and lots of children confuse B's and D's. They look alike, you know, it's a ball and a stick. So we know we have to straighten that out because that's gonna hurt your reading because there are lots of words with B's and D's. We're gonna work on fixing that. So we're gonna learn about our B hand. Have you ever used your B hand? They have a B hand. Their B hand, it looks like a B. Here's the circle, here's the line. And we teach them to not guess and to slow down and compare your hand to the letter. This is your B hand, okay? So I'm gonna put this little rubber band on you so you can remember which one's your B hand. So which one's your B hand? This one. This one, okay. I don't tell a kindergartner, a first grader, or a second grader it's your left hand because they don't know which one's their left hand. Sometimes I don't even know which one's my left hand. Uh, when we first teach it, we put something on their hand. We might put a sticker. I put a rubber band on Iko's hand so that when I say, where's your B hand? She's got something that reminds her. Three, three lessons, she won't need the rubber band anymore. She'll know what it is. Some kids get it right away. Would you put your B hand up like this and make a fist? And then put your finger up, okay? And that is your B hand. And I'm gonna show you why it's your B hand. Go like this. I'm gonna put this down here, and this letter is a B. And your hand looks like this letter. Can you see that? We have the circle right here. Where's the circle on the letter? Just point to the circle on the letter. And where's the circle on your hand? Yeah, right there. Where's the stick on the letter? Show me the stick on your finger. This is your B hand because the stick is on the same side of the circle as your finger. So your finger and, your st and the stick are on the same side of the circle. Lots of kids get B's and D's mixed up. First, kindergarten, first, and second grade does not mean that they have dyslexia. Students who have dyslexia have phonological processing issues. They do not differentiate sounds easily. They, they, there are, their problems are primarily related to phonological awareness. BD is about shapes. That is not about sounds. Will you put your B hand by the B? Yep. And is your finger on the same side of the circle as the stick or on a different side of the circle? The Look at me. The same side. The same side. Yeah. Let's go down here. Is this a B or a D? B. Okay. And when you answer, I want you to look down here and compare it. Here's what you did. You went, well, you're not going to figure it out unless you look and you compare. Okay, so you have to look and say, oh, I can tell. So is that a B or a D? Ms. Farrell's explicit lesson about recognizing the shape you know of the letter B will take like some it. time to sink in for Iko, and there's a common habit she'll need to deal with. When Iko is working on identifying a letter, she often looks up to think, looking away from the letter. The answer to what is an incorrect letter or an incorrect word is in the print. And we have to teach Iko to keep her eyes on the print, on the words when she's reading or the letters. Worked with many kids that have the same difficulty. And I'll say, keep your eyes on the words and they can't do it because their habit is so strong that they can't try to do what I'm asking them to do and remember to keep their eyes on, down. So we just practice keeping your eyes down. We're gonna practice looking down here, okay? So I'm gonna ask you a question and you can't look up until I go like this, okay? So you keep looking down, don't look up. Look down, look down, look down, look down. Now you can look up. Okay, let's try it again. Look down, look down, look down, look down. Eventually, okay. Iko will need to have images of words stored in her brain. Now, this is critical to the immediate word recognition right necessary for fluent reading. Right when right students there. say a word without I'm looking at it, they miss opportunities to develop those this. images. So hold your hand up here. Okay, so I'm gonna go A, because I don't need my B hand. But do I need my B hand for that letter? Mm. Yes, I do, because that's a B or a D. So I have to put my B hand, and 
Let me see. Is that a B or a D? Which one do you think? Oh, where are you going to look? Down. Yes. Okay. Is that a B or a D? B. Let's try that. Put your B hand next to that. Okay. Is your finger on the same or a different side? Different. Different. So is that a B or a D? D. Yes. And we're going to keep looking down. Remember, you don't get to look up until I stomp. Okay. So now I want you... We're going to go just right to here, okay? So watch me. A, D, S, B. You do it. Okay, put your hand up here for the A. Okay, do a, it. A, D, S, B. Okay, now, see how far away your hand is? you got to go like this. And you know where you looked when you read? You looked at me, but where are you supposed to be looking? Here. Yep, at the letter. So, okay, so we did those four. You do these four, and right this here. is isolated practice. I see lots of teachers who use a B and D hand or a B hand, but they only do it when the kid misses a word. So, oh, you read bog is dog. Use your B hand. You don't have to use your B hand. If it's not bog, it's dog. We've got to have isolated practice to rewire the brain, to stop guessing, and start looking. And that's what we did with Ico. Ico has pretty significant BD issues. With this kind of practice, she could solve her BD issues, I believe, in three or four weeks if we did this every day. B. You got it. Do you think you can do 10 in a row? I think you can. Let's try it. Okay.